there's something that I really, really got into in the last few years, and that's a grinder. I take a 36 grit, coarse uh, wood sanding disc, and a side grinder. Now, I will say this. This thing will slow, uh, throw a lot of dust, and it um, walnut dust is not good for you, so you really need to wear a mask. In the wintertime, it's great because it keeps my nose warm. And then I'm just going to grind the majority. I want to, uh, this is another thing. I start shaping on the butt. Uh, the front is still square sided. The, the front of this thing is still got its square sides where I can grip it in my vise. I can hold on to it. I will start at the wrist and go back. And it's easier because there's a lot more shaping involved in the, the stock section, the butt section, than there is on the front. So once I get this shaped, I'll flip it around, find some uh, pieces of wood that I can pad this with, because now this part is tapered. It's skinnier at the wrist than it is at the, uh, at the back. So it's tapered. So I'll just get me some little tapered blocks. I've actually got some that I've made over the years and you can see they're they're skinnier here than they are here. I, I keep a whole selection of blocks and I'll just put this in a tapered block flip it around and work the front but for now the front's in the vise. I'm going to try this with a handheld variety for a minute and show you how that light needs to be very centered right down that stock. You can see my center line is still there, my pencil line. That's a reference. It'll, it'll go all the way, all the way up through the middle of that trigger guard, all the way out the end of the barrel. And by working with your eyes in line with that light and in line with that center line you can take that grinder and just look at the look at the profile of it move around look at the, the straightness the straight lines there's got to be a straight flow from the tip of the pad from the toe all up to here this is slimmer this is rounder a little fatter I leave a little reveal of wood around that metal I don't bring my wood down all the way to the metal. There's about a 30 second or so reveal flat, a little flat place right there. And I'll start peeling all this away. And that I'll do more with, uh, well I have a different little, little grinder that's even smaller. And I'll use a file, rasp, sandpaper, everything I need to do. Now what I'm going to do also is I'm going to get to about the back of the trigger guard and get my width established. A lot of stock making is connecting the dots. I'm connecting from where it needs to be right here at the wrist to the toe. I'm just making a smooth line between here and there. I'm connecting the width from the back of the receiver to the bottom of the wrist, the bottom of the pistol grip. And I'm just making smooth transitions from there. There's, no, there's nothing straight on a stock except for the top where the barrel sits down in it, the, bar the top of the barrel bed. That's straight. Everything else is tapered, curved, crooked, you name it. <clears throat> Gun stocks aren't even symmetrical always because if you have a, a cheek piece, on a right-handed cheek piece, it's on this side of the stock. And so this side looks different from this side. You can't make a symmetrical piece of wood that fits a person because we hold the gun on one side of us. So there's nothing symmetrical about the way we grip the gun. Our right hand is in the back on the trigger, the front hand is in, the left hand is on the front. The, uh, you're using one eye dominant, you're using it right handed or left handed. So there's nothing symmetrical about the way we hold a gun. So the fact that a gun needs to be symmetrical is really erroneous. It doesn't. It needs to fit the person. And, and that's where, that's where a, a well made stock is different from a not so well made stock. One that fits the person is uh, 
is going to shoot better and, and quicker. Right, this little dude right here is a Fordham. It's a Fordham tool. It's a remote foot operated with a motor and a cable. Plugs in the back of here. Get it going just a little bit. Push it in this turn. Okay. This is a carbide cutter. Uh, mean little dude. Mean little dude. It'll sling stuff at you, and if you're not careful, it'll it'll chew up your fingers. It'll really grind on you if you're not careful. All right, I'm going to be working on this uh, this wrist. This thing cuts right-handed or left-handed, clockwise, counterclockwise. Cuts both ways. This morning I'm working on a Mauser that is, uh, I believe it's a 300 Winchester short mag. It's a custom barrel Mauser action for a friend of mine in Georgia, and he's wanting me to pattern it after this. This rifle is a takeoff of a John Rigby Mountain Stalker. It's a little thin in my opinion. The wrist is 1.2 which I think it needs to be closer to 1 and 3 8 uh, the the sides on just the sides of the meat that you have beside the barrel to, to me it's just a little thin it's matter of fact this is a 300 H&H &H, uh, Magnum and it's already got a little chip you can see a little tiny chip at the back of the tang where it's already the recoil has has smacked it loose and I'm gonna have to fix that before I give it back to him, but it um, this is what he wants it patterned after, and the customer's always right. So I'm going to be patterning. So I'm going to be taking dimensions off of this one and bringing them to the one that I'm working on here, um, which I've already got it inleted, I've already got it bedded, and I'm now I'm working outside shape depth. So I'm going to be referring to that one from time to time. But the main thing I have right now is my wrist. And behind the wrist, right below the comb, there's a little dip, just a little tiny dip. It's only uh, 100 thousandths from, from the wrist to the dip on that rifle. So I'm going to start working this down with a heavy rasp. <laughs> getting close. That's 1.43. <clears throat> I'm going to be wanting it down around 1.375. 
with that coarse file it leaves such big marks you've got to allow yourself enough room to dig uh, to clean up those marks Big old teeth take off a lot of wood, but they do leave it rough. That's as far as I'm going to go with that now on this upper side. I'm going to connect the lower side. different view of this grip cap you can see that there's a oh I don't know almost a sixteenth of an inch of wood still left around that grip cap you can't file to the metal so you gotta get as close as you can get with your files and your sandpaper without touching that metal and then you gotta take this off and go on down to that line you can't really mark a line you just have to know that I have another ten thousandths of an inch to sand off of it but that little line that I left there that reveal is intentional and with this grip cap with this pistol grip so small because the customer wants it small I'm gonna go all the way down where this this cap is flush with the wood now if I have a cap that's a little too small and the, and the grip needs to be bigger I'll leave a reveal on purpose and finish that that little bit of flat wood there shows and it's finished but in this case I need to go all the way down to this to this dimension front to back and left to right this is the one that I'm reproducing you can see the cap the wood is smooth and flush with it all the way down and this this grip is a little too tight a little too closed for my customer it's just too uh, too to the curve right here is too tight he wants it more open so what I've done is take about a quarter of an inch off this the end of the grip and scoot it backwards to where it opened this grip up I may have gone more than a quarter but anyway he had another stock that fit him and he liked it and so I just I copied that one This stock has a fair amount of fiddleback in it. Fiddleback is those little stripes that go across the grain. And as you sand, they start to show up. You can you can start to see those little those little stripes right there. there's a couple of things I need to point out about right here one is this rubber has got little chatter marks in it the black plastic here is smooth I'm sanding this this and this all at the same time but the way rubber reacts to the sand block it leaves these chatter marks that'll come out later there's another process <clears throat> the other thing is right in this little crotch right here is hard to deal with. Let me show you what it's supposed to look like when it's done. On this sample rifle you can see there's a little sharp line, a little V, and it fades out about right there. But from there to there there's a little V. It's not easy to get there. 
Well, thanks for choosing to spend your time here with me today. I hope you've enjoyed this program. I'll try to post a new segment each weekend. In addition, if you'd like to read about a stock that I made and then it took a 20-foot free fall, click on the link at the bottom of this page. It's called The Broken Gun. It's a story I wrote a few years ago about my two boys. Sometimes life's hard and things get broken. Now and then we get a chance to fix them. I'm so grateful for the opportunity I had to repair this broken stock. It led to a restoration that I never could have imagined. As always, if you like this video, please click the like button and share this with your friends. Have a great day.